Hello, my lovely friend, and welcome to the Ms. Artastic Podcast. As you might notice, I'm doing things a little different. So there's two ways to view or listen to my podcasts. One, you can definitely watch or listen to it, sorry, on your favorite podcast players such as Spotify, iTunes. Uh, I don't really know what app the Apple one is. Is it Apple Podcast? I don't know. I live in the Android world, so I'm totally sorry there. Um, however, the second way um, is that you can totally watch my videos on YouTube. I am actually filming and recording at the same time, so that way it is consumable in two different ways, either by subscribing to the Ms. Artastic YouTube channel or by subscribing to my podcast on your favorite podcast player. All right, so let's dive into this episode, my friend. I'm going to be talking about uh, three end-of-year choice-based art ideas, and yes, I'm going to also be including a free printable with this one. It's a free printable art choice board activity, and you can find it either in the show notes um, if you're listening to it as a podcast. Um, You can go to my blog, mizartastic.com, find the show notes there. Um, I will link to the show notes in the description of this podcast episode, or if you're watching it on YouTube, you will find the link to the show notes in the description description below the video head on over to that show notes and then on there you'll find the free printable link it's super easy grab it and it's a choice board to get you going for the end of the year so that being said let's dive in into this episode you're listening to the miss artastic podcast inspiration for art teachers here's your host kathleen mcgivern Well, my friend, end of year is almost here and I know that you are super teacher exhausted right now, feeling all that brain melt, melt, but no worries because I have done some of the brainstorming for your end of year planning for you. And I've actually come up with three end of year are ideas that explore uh, choice-based learning strategies to give you a break and the students the freedom to express and explore and show what they know before the end of the school year. So if you are listening, or again, if you are watching this on YouTube, make sure you head on over to the show notes, link below in the description, and then you're gonna scroll to the bottom of the the show notes to snag the free printable end of year choice board. Super easy. It's gonna give you tons of our ideas. Kids can choose them, you can assign them. You can use it in lots of different ways, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. All right, so my first idea for end-of-year art ideas is an end-of-year before and after self-portrait. Oh, yes. So if you want to tie in both social-emotional learning and some art history into your classroom before the year ends, this is how to do it. Okay, so first, make sure that you teach a lesson essentially on art history and how artists have traditionally painted themselves um, and their own self-portraits throughout history and even in different moments through their lives. There's lots of artists that have done this. um, You know, you can go way back into art history. You can bring up Van Gogh. He's done himself a few times in different ways, as we know. Uh, Frida Kahlo, lots of self-portraits. That one is definitely, you're going to want to be mindful about some of the self-portraits that you you depict or show, depending on the age of the students, of course, but you're going to be able to find lots of them. There's even, you can show Andy Warhol's wig, um, prints. Uh, There's so many ways you can go about this, but self-portraits are a huge theme for artists and throughout our history. You can even find contemporary artists painting self-portraits now to tie in a little bit of contemporary vibes and show things or artworks that people are working on and presenting now who are still alive and creating today. I think that's good too. Um, not a lot of, em- not as much emphasis is always placed on contemporary artists making right now. And I think we got to do more for that. 
Anywho, so show essentially a range of styles and artists' portraits and briefly talk about each of the artists and the style of the work. So this is a good way to tie in, again, art history, different styles of artworks. Um, and then in this lesson, you can also ask art viewing questions such as, what message do you think the artist was trying to create? Why do you think they painted their own portrait? What do you notice in the artwork? What symbols or objects do you see and how do you think they affect the meaning of the work? I always, always, no matter what the age is, I always try to incorporate a think, pair, share before having the kids share ideas to encourage total participation in your classroom. Um, think to self first. So think, pair, share. We think to ourselves for a minute, right? Silently thinking to ourselves. Then we share and we whisper, um, you know, shoulder to shoulder or finger, finger length away. We whisper to our friends and share ideas. That way we get two brains working together instead of one. And then um, after you're done turning and talking to your buddy, you guys can do a share out to the class. That way you're getting a lot more hands raised versus just, you know, whoever happened to have an idea on the spot in the moment. We all need time to think and this is a great way of allowing that time. And that way you're gonna engage the kids. They're gonna have a lot more participation in your classroom. It's not just gonna be echoes where everybody's feeling like on the spot. They'll feel confident because they've talked to their buddies and have reaffirmed their own ideas plus gained theirs. Anyways, all right, so next students can create their own self portraits with a twist. Half will depict themselves at the start of the year or what they perceive they looked like or um, representation of their identity at the start of the year. And the other half will show them at the end of the school year to show a transformation of their identities throughout the year. Ask them to explore and use symbols in their artworks to help define meaning. And of course, you can scaffold it or level it up, level it down, um, or change your expectations for this project depending on either the age or ability of the students that you're working with. All right, so the next idea is to do an end of year art scavenger hunt. Okay, I'm getting really into scavenger hunts. I think it might end up being one of my new things. You might start seeing different things pop up. I don't know, I'm playing with it. But anyways, um, end of year scavenger hunt. I think that, well, end of year, scavenger hunts are first of all great. And I think we gotta bring that into the art classroom. Kids need movement. You need movement. The weather's nice. Grab your non-fat summer edition latte and head outdoors while we all enjoy a scavenger hunt. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Okay, so this is especially a good idea if you have a schoolyard or the weather is again good outside. Or if they're littles and you're into it, you can create and hide things around your classroom for them to find as well find and draw essentially as well. Or if you don't have time to take the learning outdoors, basically get creative with this. But really you can make this like as big or as small as you want. So first, in your planning, set up things for students to find. So either they are actual things to draw, like a slide, stairs, or whatever, or you can go outside and hide clues, like amazing race, or objects to draw, or prompts to find and draw. <laughs> Sorry, really you can do this in a lot of ways, but you need to know what they're going to draw before you ask them to draw. One time um, I actually, I did a Harry Potter classroom um, a few years in a row. Uh, one time I thought, oh, what if I, at the end of the year, um, I hide laminated uh, just pictures of spiders around the classroom and I turned that into kind of a scavenger hunt. But maybe anytime they get to that symbol or they find a laminated symbol or you know art medium, whatever your symbol is, maybe it's your art teacher logo, whatever it is. Anyways, or maybe you hide, ooh, you could <laughs> take a picture of you and laminate it and hide little miniature yous all over the classroom. Honestly, wouldn't they find that hilarious? I think so. So you should definitely do that one. <laughs> but whenever they find you, they have to draw something in that area or a view from what you would see as a micro you. Ooh, you could really play with it. See what I mean? You could just expand on this idea like, oh, if I was miniature Mrs. or Ms. or Mix or Mr. Uh, so-and-so, what, what, 
what view would that teacher see as a laminated miniature? And then they have to draw that. Like you could be super abstract with this, right? Or you could be like very literal and be like, okay, Ms. Mr. Mix, Ms. Miss, whatever, is holding um, a pencil, draw a still life of a pencil, whatever. Or you could put a prompt there and they get to that card and they find the first, if it's an like, you know, amazing race style or they have to go in order, it could say a drawing prompt such as like draw. Um, <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> draw a sad piece of food left over on the floor or whatever. You know, like after lunchtime. I mean, actually, sorry. There's always different classes, right? Like there's always, like, sometimes you'll get a year and the class is like the neatest class ever and there's just nothing out of place and then sometimes you get a year and then you just look around there's like a disaster occurring around some tables or desks all the time <laughs> and the kids are completely unaware it's not intentional I mean it could be I guess but typically I find it's not intentional it just happens to get there we never know why anyways you do you is what I'm saying you can go about this a hundred different ways and I'm sure all of them will be fine and good Okay, so design the scavenger hunt once you have the game plan. And you can set them up in a page. So like in your sketchbooks or even you can make a principle for this. Simple grid draw, you can decorate the border if you want. You don't have to. Or just have them set a piece of paper up or a page up in your sketchbook and put them on clipboards or if it's a sketchbook, probably just take it with you. And then finally teach the lesson and explain the parameters of the scavenger hunt. Let them grab a choice art making mediums. I mean, relax, right? Like this is end of year. We're wrapping it down. We're not making it this complicated. Chill, 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 chill. Okay, let them grab choice art mediums and discover and create so they can venture out there, find the tasks, return to you when it's done. Um, whatever parameters or tasks that you have set up, they're now going to engage with that. Essentially, lesson is on. Bonus! Okay, here's a bonus for you. You can give prizes. Now, I'm not super big on prizes. In fact, uh, a lot of the times they would just be like acknowledgement prizes. <laughs> I never was a huge prize person, but whatever. You can do you. Uh, but you could give prizes for like first finisher, a completion prize for everybody. It could be like a stick mark or a bookmark that you make and print off and laminate. Uh, you can make it on Canva for free. You could draw one and then like photocopy it, right? Whatever. Um, you can give them a throw littles, just give them a jelly bean each. Whatever it is, that's cool. Or my favorite awards are a quietest drawer, helping others, leader, role model to younger students, all of the above. All right, so last idea is having end of year choice boards ready to go in your classroom and my friend you can use this every single year as part of your end of year game yeah like you could prep this put it in a folder and then bring that folder out every single year now if you want to save uh, paper um, time you could always just laminate one set and then keep that one set in a basket and then you can use that with all your classes and you can even have them use dry erase markers on them as they complete them. Or if you want to give kids one to put in their sketchbooks or binders, duotangs, folders, whatever, you can always photocopy it and give them each one. Whatever you want to do, you do you. Or if they have devices, you can give them a digital version, um, all of the above, right? There's so many ways to go about giving them the choice board. So this wouldn't be choice-based themed if I didn't recommend doing a choice board, would it? All right, so I know you're all kind of tired, so don't worry, I have already made it for you. It's a free printable choice board included in this for you. And the best thing is that with this, um, that your students can just use uh, all of the ideas on here or just a little. So there's one choice board, they can pick what they're gonna do, or you can assign different assignments, but essentially it's a grid with a whole bunch of end of year assignments in a simple sentence. That's it, super, super simple straight to the point, the rest of it is student choice, perfect for end of year. So you can laminate them again and then turn them into like a when you're done art center as they finish up other work or while they're doing testing if that's something that you guys have to do 
Um, you can use them as the actual assignment and have them either complete all, maybe complete two, complete five, whatever it is. You can even give prizes for it, like most on task, best role model, model leader, quietest table mate, uh, respecting the art mediums, helping others, etc. I, again, really love to promote those kinds of accountable accountability pieces as prizes. As well, you don't have to buy prizes, again, if you have no budget. Um, I have done like sit in a beanbag chair or camping chair for a class or sit at teacher's desk or I have printed off and made, again, my own bookmarks, print them onto cardstock, and that's it. Just cut them, done. Um, sometimes I even let kids like have a stuffy at their table if you have like classroom stuffies or maybe they want to bring one in. Whatever it is, all of this is fun and it's totally chill. It's end of the year, let it happen, right? Um, it's going to help. I mean, it seems like a like oh we're amping things up with bringing stuffies, but really they're just going to be so having so having so much fun, which means that you can relax and kind of wind things down and tidy up your classroom at the same time. So be creative. Kids just really love the change and recognition and engaging them in this way is honestly going to give you a little bit of a break because they're not going to be going wild <laughs> at the end of the year. That's what we're avoiding is the extreme wild. We're not going to avoid it completely. We're all excited for end of year, but we're just trying to guide it and facilitate it in a certain way. <laughs> all right, so you can either make your own end of your choice board or if you want, you can click the link in the show notes to download a free printable end of your art choice board is completely free. It's at the bottom of the show notes on the blog. So you can click the link below the YouTube video or in the podcast uh, description there and it's going to take you to the show notes. Scroll down to the bottom, click that link and my friend, you'll be set to go with your own end of your choice board just by clicking a button. So this is Ms. Artastic. Thank you so much for watching and I am signing out. Thank you so much for watching this awesome video. Please make sure that you hit that like button and in the comments, tell me what you would like to see in the next episode as well. If you would like to see more episodes, please hit that subscribe button. It will definitely allow me to continue to make these fabulous art videos. Well, for more art lessons, check out Artastic Kids. It is my online streaming art lesson community for kids and families so that you can make art with easy to find art mediums anytime, anywhere. Artastic Kids is where kids can unleash their creativity, build essential skills, and have fun. So visit artastickids.com to learn more. Mm -hmm.